Channel Sports Central will be giving you guys my Big Ten quarterback rankings for the upcoming college football season. And as we head closer and closer to this upcoming season, we're going to continue to look in-depth in each of the positions for each of the conferences. And today, I'll be ranking the Big Ten quarterbacks. So, obviously, the Big Ten has got a ton of great quarterbacks. This is a conference that is just stacked to the brim uh, with outstanding quarterbacks. And really, I mean, each quarterback on this list does show potential and definitely has a lot of talent. But this is just going to be my rankings and another thing is we still have several quarterback battles that are obviously still underway. Uh, so these are each of the projected starting quarterbacks here today. Um, these are not confirmed by any means. But that means so we're going to go ahead and start out with number 14, uh, which is going to be Michigan State's Peyton Thorne. We're also doing a, um, a tier list here, and this is going to be a part of the D tier. Peyton Thorne definitely, I mean, he definitely has probably the worst stats in the Big Ten right now and probably the least potential, I'd say, out of each of these quarterbacks on this list. But looking at him, he put up 580 yards, three touchdowns, three interceptions, also a 55% completion rate last season, which that is a pretty terrible completion rate. Usually a good completion rate would be around like 60 to 65% or so or higher. And Peyton Thorne is significantly below that. And that's a big problem for him is his inaccuracy. I mean, if you can improve that, if you can stay more consistent, in 2021, I could see Michigan State being pretty good at the quarterback position, but Peyton Thorne right now does look to be the worst quarterback right now that the Big Ten has to offer. Number 13 is also going to be the D tier. It's going to be Rutgers' uh, Noah Bedrill. He's been all over the place from UCF to Nebraska to Rutgers, um, and he's finally gotten an opportunity at Rutgers to be a starting quarterback. Last season, he was the primary quarterback uh, for the Scarlet Knights. He put up 1,200 yards, 9 touchdowns, um, 8 interceptions as well, and then a 61% completion rate. So, Overall, not bad season out of him. I mean, he's definitely, I mean, he's definitely got a ton of potential, and he's got a ton of experience um, in college football. Um, even though he did not play very much from 2017 to 2019, uh, but at UCF, I mean, he showed a lot of potential there. I mean, if you look at um, how he played in 2017, at least uh, when he was in, he put up a 75% completion rate, which is a pretty good completion rate. So. He was pretty accurate then. Then he primarily played as the backup quarterback for Nebraska there uh, for a couple of seasons as he followed Scott Frost from UCF to Nebraska. That's how he got to the Huskers in the first place. Then obviously after 2018 or after 2019, he moved on to Rutgers, which I think that was the right move for him. I think Rutgers is definitely um, the best team that he could be at right now that he could start. Um, I definitely think he's got potential, but we're, we just got to see a much um, much higher completion rate if he's going to be a top quarterback in the Big Ten. But number 12 and a part of our C tier is going to be Jack Plummer or Aiden O'Connell, whichever quarterback uh, does end up starting for Purdue. I mean, both quarterbacks are pretty much at the same, at the, um, at the same skill level here. But Jack Plummer um, played pretty well in 2019. I mean, he put up 1,600 yards, 11 touchdowns, 8 interceptions. But in 2020, he drastically improved his completion rate. Um, he improved his interception ratio a ton. Um, he's definitely got potential, and I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how he does next season. Uh, in 2020, obviously, uh, put up nearly 1,000 yards, 8 touchdowns, 2 interceptions. Not a bad season for him. Watch out for Jack Plummer. Um, and Aiden O'Connell, obviously, is going to be kind of in the background. I wouldn't be surprised to see um, O'Connell get some action next season. But right now, it looks to be uh, Jack Plummer as the primary starting quarterback. Number 11 is going to be Brandon Peters out of Illinois. And I've actually seen a lot of polarizing opinions about Brandon Peters. There are some uh, lists that have Brandon Peters as far as like number 8 or number 7 in the Big Ten. And I've seen a few where he's at number 12 or 13. I've got him kind of in the middle at number 11. I just think Brandon Peters is a talented quarterback. I mean, but his completion rate is just terrible. I mean, he's so inaccurate. And I mean, if you look at 2020, I mean, 420 yards didn't play a whole lot, but three touchdowns. 48% completion rate. That is less than half of your pass is being completed. That cannot slide, especially in a Big Ten uh, college football environment. But the thing that gives him the edge is that he's been in the Big Ten for four years already. He's got a ton of experience uh, playing these teams. And in 2019, he actually showed that he can be a good quarterback. 1,800 yards, 18 touchdowns, um, eight interceptions, and a 55% rate. Which, I mean, yardage-wise, that's not bad at all. So he's definitely showed potential. Uh, he just really needs to capitalize on that and continue to get better. Um, which Illinois next season, it could be a rough season just because the new coaching situation um, and in general, I mean, this Illinois team isn't looking too good talent-wise as well next season. But Brandon Peters definitely, I think, can be a good leader for this team and definitely could um, give Illinois a surprise season as well. Number 10 is going to be Ryan Halinski. He's the transfer in out of South Carolina. And he's coming into Northwestern for this upcoming season. I say the job is pretty much his. I mean, Ryan Halinski is... Um, definitely most known uh, for the upset that he pulled actually at George in 2019. Uh, that was a huge win for him. Definitely his best game, I'd say. Uh, he had 2,300 yards, 11 touchdowns, 5 interceptions back in 2019. Didn't play much in 2020. 
Uh, obviously, he only had 34 yards and also only passed three times last season. So um, that's definitely something you got to watch out for there. But Ryan Holinsky definitely, I think, has got potential. And, I mean, Pat Fitzgerald, I mean, he's got a pretty open decision here. I mean, Northwestern does not have many uh, quarterbacks that can get the starting position. So Ryan Holinsky, I'm pretty sure it's his job. Uh, but we'll have to see what happens there. Number nine is going to be Spencer Petrus out of Iowa, um, the top quarterback in our C tier. 1,500 yards is what he had last season. Uh, nine touchdowns, five interceptions as well. Spencer Petrus is definitely a very inconsistent quarterback and definitely a polarizing quarterback for that matter. Um, I mean, he definitely improved a ton over the course of the season. He started out the season as probably one of the worst quarterbacks in the conference, but he actually he ended out, I'd say, as one of the top quarterbacks, um, definitely in the Big Ten West and probably a top quarterback or a top half quarterback overall in the conference. Uh, but he's going to fall at number nine on this list, at least. And I think he's definitely got potential once again. I mean, he put up a 57% completion rate, uh, nine touchdowns, five interceptions. Definitely improved a ton over 2020. He is definitely a player to watch out for. But for now, I'm going to stay kind of conservative with him. Uh, I'm going to keep, at, keep him at number nine. But definitely watch out for him because I think he's got a definitely upside going into next season. Number eight is going to be Graham Mertz. Graham Mertz and Spencer Petras are kind of in the same situation. Both of them had very similar stats. Uh, both of them kind of had the same skill level, kind of the same play style as well. Graham Mertz, though, I see just a little more potential in. Uh, I put up 1,200 yards, 9 touchdowns, 5 interceptions. Pretty much the same stats um, as um, as Spencer Petras. He just has a higher completion rate at 61%, which, I mean, 4% on a completion rate is actually quite a bit. So, he was more accurate than Spencer Petras, but both quarterbacks are still, once again, very similar. Um, but I definitely think that Graham Mertz moving forward, uh, he just needs to improve his interception rate. Um, and he also, I mean, if he can um, raise up that completion rate as well, that would be huge for Wisconsin. And he's also a part of our B tier. I could have easily put uh, Spencer Petras at the B tier as well, but it just falls on Graham Mertz here, number eight. Number seven is going to be Cade McNamara um, out of Michigan. Sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. <laughs> Jeez. Um, but no, Michigan last season, 420 yards, uh, five touchdowns. Had a good year for this team, 61% completion rate as well. Um, but overall, yeah, played very well last season. He shows a ton of potential. And, I mean, if you look at Milton, Joe Milton, the former quarterback for this team, transferred to Tennessee. I mean, McNamara is showing a ton of potential, and I definitely think uh, that's a huge reason why Joe Milton ended up uh, transferring out. But who knows? Alan Bowman is coming in as well for Michigan. So that is definitely something you got to watch out for as well. Uh, we're going to see a big quarterback battle in Michigan. But Alan Bowman, Cade McNamara, uh, should be interesting to see who gets the starting position there. But uh, for Michigan next season, this is definitely a team that I think if they can get a good quarterback, definitely a team to watch out for. Um, I don't think that they'll be able to win the Big Ten East by any means, but I could see this team uh, performing pretty well, maybe getting a couple upsets next season. Number six is going to be Adrian Martinez out of Nebraska. And this is a quarterback that is extremely polarizing. I mean, if you look at, uh, for me, for example, I'm a Husker fan. I'm actually a fan of Adrian Martinez. I like this guy. Um, I definitely think he's uh, got a tremendous amount of potential. He just does not have the confidence yet, if you're asking me. Um, if you look at 2018, 2,600 yards, 17 touchdowns, 8 interceptions, 65% completion rate. Performed extremely well um, in the 2018 season. And there was a ton of hype around him going into 2019. Um, in 2019, though, huge. I mean, he was a little bit injured, but... Uh, he just did not put up anywhere near um, as good as stats in 2019 as he did in 2018. 59% uh, completion rate, which is much lower, uh, 1,900 yards. And then in 2020, his completion rate was higher, but he did only throw four touchdowns and three interceptions. So Adrian Martinez is a very polarizing quarterback for that reason. In 2019 and 2020, he was definitely down in comparison to 2018. 2018 is by far his best season so far. If he can find what he did in 2018 and build upon that, and get better as a quarterback. I mean, he's definitely got potential. Um, it's just been a tough last couple of seasons for him, injury-wise, and also, I mean, consistency-wise. He's a very inconsistent quarterback. But Adrian Martinez has got a huge amount of upside. Once again, we did see him in 2018 when he was healthy. If he can be healthy for this 2021 season, watch out for him because I definitely think he could lead Nebraska to a good season. Number five is going to be Talia Tagaviola out of, or sorry, Maryland. Yeah, last season he put up 1,000 yards, 7 touchdowns, 7 interceptions, um, also a 62% completion rate. So overall, not a bad season out of him. Uh, he played pretty well, and he definitely, I'd say, has got the biggest potential to be a breakout quarterback in the 2021 season. Obviously, he transferred in out of Alabama. Uh, obviously, his brother Tua um, was at Alabama, and Talia decided to transfer to Maryland, which he is going to be a huge asset uh, for the Terps moving forward. I definitely want to um, see him do well, and I definitely think he will. Um... 
but I mean, I could easily put him at number three on this list just because of the amount of potential he has, but just because of his stats, last season, seven touchdowns, seven interceptions, I'm going to keep him a little bit lower than most lists are having him, but I definitely think he's got potential to be a top three quarterback um, in the conference next season. Number four is going to be Tanner Morgan out of Minnesota, first quarterback in the A tier. Uh, so we got four A tier quarterbacks in the Big Ten. Uh, but yeah, Tanner Morgan in 2019, that was his great season. I mean, if you look at him in 2019, 3,200 yards, uh, 30 touchdowns, seven interceptions, and he's a 66% a, a completion rate. Overall played outstanding for Minnesota. He led that team to a great 2019 season. 2020 was kind of a different story. He was definitely down 1,300 yards, uh, seven touchdowns, five interceptions. Did not play as well in 2020. And, I mean, for Tanner Morgan, he's definitely a quarterback that I think, I mean, in 2019, he was he was an outstanding quarterback. I mean, he led Minnesota to uh, one of their best seasons that they've ever had, for that matter. And I think Tanner Morgan definitely can do that again. But the problem is for him is just he needs to be more consistent. And in 2020, that was his problem. He was just so inconsistent, pretty inaccurate as well. So if he can put 2020 aside and keep moving on and keep getting better, I could see him definitely being a top quarterback in the conference. Number three is going to be Sean Clifford out of Penn State, kind of in the same uh, boat as Tanner Morgan here. I mean, he kind of had a down 2020 season. Definitely improved over 2020, though. The start of 2020 was just terrible out of Sean Clifford. But other than that, I mean, he definitely improved over the course of the season. 1,800 yards um, in 2020 with 16 touchdowns, 9 interceptions, and a 60% completion rate. Not a bad season, um, but in 2019 especially, he was a great quarterback. Uh, led Penn State to a top 10 ranking for the majority of the season, uh, 2,600 yards, 23 touchdowns, uh, 7 interceptions once again. So overall, great season for Sean Clifford in 2019. He is trying to improve right now, but I definitely think Sean Clifford, if he can get a couple of good weapons in his receiving core, he could definitely have potential to be a top 3, top 2 quarterback in the Big Ten. Number 2 is going to be C.J. Stroud out of Ohio State. It looks like he's going to be your primary starter for next season. Once again, this is a huge quarterback battle, though we see... Um, a ton of back and forth here, and I haven't really heard as much as to who's going to be our primary starter. But Kyle McCord is also in contention for the starting position. Uh, but I'm going to go with C.J. Stroud here just because um, he was around in 2020. Uh, 48 yards, one touchdown as well as what he had. So he didn't really play last season, but, I mean, he was an outstanding recruit. He's definitely got a huge amount of potential. I like this guy quite a bit. C.J. Stroud, definitely be on the lookout for him next season as he's going to lead Ohio State to yet another great season, I can almost guarantee you. And, I mean, having Kyle McCord in their background, I mean, that's outstanding as well, having a great backup quarterback there in McCord. Um, so it should be interesting to see what happens here in the quarterback situation. Uh, but C.J. Stroud right now looks to be the primary starter, and I'm going to have him at number two. Lastly, number one, without a doubt in my mind, is going to be Michael Penix. And most of you guys probably are, are sleeping on Michael Penix. I mean, he's from Indiana. Indiana is usually a pretty sleepy college football team. But in 2021, this Indiana, this Indiana team is going to be for real. Uh, I could easily see this team being a big contender next season. Honestly, for the Big Ten East, it's either Indiana or Ohio State. I could see Indiana uh, rivaling up to Ohio State next season in the Big Ten East. And it sounds crazy right now because Indiana usually is not a very good football team. But this is a team that has got Michael Penix, who is an outstanding quarterback. His completion rates are outstanding. Um, extremely accurate quarterback. And that's his primary strength is because of... Um, how great of a thrower he is and how accurate he is. Uh, he had 1,600 yards last season, 14 touchdowns, 4 interceptions, and we saw this potential in 2019 after his great season then. I mean, going into 2020, I mean, most of us knew that Indiana was going to be a good team just because of Michael Penix and his talent. Uh, but moving into 2021, he is definitely bound for breakout season, I think. Um, just looking at his progression over the past few years, I mean, Peyton Ramsey, for example, he was a former Indiana quarterback who transferred to Northwestern. He saw the potential in Michael Penix, and the coaches did as well. And that's why he transferred out so quickly is because Michael Penix was quickly taking over the position. So uh, Michael Penix is a huge quarterback to watch out for um, next season. Excuse me. And I definitely think he's got I mean, a tremendous amount of potential to possibly lead this Indiana team to maybe even a New Year's Six Bowl game. Like, I could see that happen uh, for Indiana next season. Um, it's just they got to get past Ohio State. It just sucks for them that Ohio State is in their division because that's always the big – um, the big uh, contender in the in the Big Ten. And Ohio State next season is going to be right back to being one of the best teams in the conference. So for Indiana, Michael Penix definitely needs to lead this team uh, to a great season because this is about as good as it gets uh, for chances of Indiana being a national contender. Anyway, that being said, that wraps up my Big Ten rankings or Big Ten quarterback rankings for the upcoming season. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below on this list. If you change anything, let me know in the comments below. 
Appreciate you guys all watching. If you enjoyed the video, slap a like on it, subscribe as well as it does help out the channel, and I really appreciate that. But once again, appreciate you guys all watching. Stay tuned for more from All Sports Central. I'll see you guys later.